Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To some of you, and peace to the rest of you. This is Black Heart Sign of Black, and again, asking you to hit that share button even before you hit the like or the subscribe button because the message is more important than the messenger. And this message is in response to uh, synthetic, I mean, Cynthia G and her video entitled Black Men uh, Provide Nothing But Want Everything. Or maybe she said black men want everything but provide nothing. I'm not sure about the order, but I know what the message is about. I don't have any reason to be diplomatic in this. O'Shea was nice and diplomatic and very reasonable. Red Supreme was reasonable but not so much nice and diplomatic. I'm going to only be reasonable, but, or rather rational, but um, I don't take prisoners. Sometimes I do, but in this case, I don't need to because she's already heard what she needs to hear. There's more that she hasn't heard and she still needs to hear it. Cynthia G said that black men want everything but provide nothing. The first point I'm gonna to make to refute this is that uh, everybody wants everything, but are socialized not to expect everything. But black men are being socialized quickly to not expect even what we earn. America will do that to you. But guess who else will do that to you other than just America? Specifically, black American women will quickly socialize a black boy to always hold himself to a level of responsibility, but not to expect rewards even when he does what he should do. I've seen this many times. Crushing the spirits of black boys. Not intentionally all the time, but it's been done. So black men are no different if they want everything. I think she may have meant to say that black men expect everything but provide nothing. But even then, that would not have been true because as we know, black men don't expect everything. We're socialized not to expect anything, really. I've seen this myself. Black men don't provide, though. Well, see, we have provided. Ever since slavery ended, we built HBCUs, we built churches. We, that was us. We did that. We provided. What happened is that it seems that we have not provided because we have not been able to provide at the level of the robber, thief, oppressor of the planet. And that is due to African-American women having a unique version of Miss Ann syndrome. You see, first off, African-American women uh, typically worked in white homes as domestics, and these were jobs that even black men could not get. And so after a day of taking care of these white homes in these white neighborhoods, uh, they would go home to their black husband in a black neighborhood in a black home with the salary that a black man was gonna make, and then they would get mad at that man for not having what that white husband had, thinking that he was just not doing as well when in fact the system was simply never going to pay him as well. And then let's not forget Cynthia G. When black men built something independent of whites, they resorted to violence to burn it. They did this every time. You can look up North Carolina. Look up a, a, the governor of Wilmington named uh, A.D. Waddell. W A double D E double L. He was the governor during a time, and specifically because of a white supremacist coup against a black voting majority in Wilmington during Reconstruction. Yeah, that's real. That's just one example. Now that was one of the less, lesser uh, violent examples, although it, there was violence involved. As a matter of fact, the black newspaper of Wilmington, North Carolina, was burned to the ground, and that plot of land remains an empty plot to this day. It's just a stretch of land with nothing that's never been built on it ever since then. That's real. Black men don't provide? No. Black men have it stolen when we provide. She said black men are dominated. Well, let's say if we are dominated, even gorillas are dominated by human beings and put in cages, but the female gorilla doesn't try to mate with the human captor to get a better position. They don't choose the male gorilla in captivity or in the wild. The female gorilla does not choose the male gorilla based on how the poachers hate him or on, based on how the poachers love the male. The poachers don't get to choose how female gorillas choose their male mates. These are gorillas we're talking about, not humans. They don't have the same intellect that we have. But crackers get to choose how not black women, but specifically and only Western black women choose black men. Now, that's too much power for a civilization so anti-moral and wicked to have. But guess who ceded that power to them? It wasn't black men, Western or non-Western. Black men didn't cede that power. It was black women. They were pretty much saying, well, you know, based on what white men don't like, we're going to choose our mates. Now, that's actually a revolutionary thing to do, and I'm, I'm all for that when you're doing it as a revolutionary measure, but this was actually done as more of a dysgenic measure. 
See, all men of color around the globe are dominated by white supremacy, but it is only the Western black woman that uses that as an excuse to get fresh out of pocket with the black men who least contribute to the cycle that goes over the, these, yeah, the cycle that goes along with white supremacy. The black men who least contribute to the cycle of white supremacy and the resulting dysfunction from which white supremacy then draws the strength to continue the cycle are the same black men that black women will get fresh out of pocket in the faces of pretty much every time. Because they want that, that nigger rebellion. They don't want the black rebellion. They don't want, they definitely don't want the Muslim rebellion. They want the nigger rebellion. And the nigger rebellion loses. That's why they want it. It is proof to white zaddy that they are putting down the rebellions from the inside. Well, see, we can control this rebellion, zaddy. They aren't getting this way with the most disrespectful niggas in the hood. The one that always tells everyone else to duck his sick every time he gets into an argument, and that is a spoonerism, euphemism, uh, isn't being taught harsh lessons from black women, especially the attractive ones, even the attractive ones from better upbringings. No, no, see, the ratchet hood rat wants the worst that the hood has to offer, but so does suburban Susan. And this breeds and spreads dysfunction from which white supremacy now can draw extra strength and extra advantages beyond what it originally planned to as part of the cycle. So we're dominated. But look, Cynthia, if black men did what you wanted, you would be killed by white men. And how do I know? Let's take the better ones in the Arabian Gulf who hate to study, and, I, and I'm responsible for teaching them. I have to teach them in an hour and six minutes from now. Let me explain this to you. These better one teenagers hate to study. They're like niggas. Not even like black people, they're just like black American niggas. They hate to study and they love all the cheating and everything else that, that goes along with not studying but wanting a high grade. Well, see the thing is, I noticed that the females of the society actually do a lot more studying, a lot more. They're much better students. They learn the English language much more quickly. They learn medicine uh, much more quickly. They do all of these things. But you know what the trouble is? Let me tell you why I still can't respect them to a certain extent. When it comes to the men that are dysfunctional, they defend them. I have told some of these ladies, your brothers are lazy as hell. They're dysfunctional, they don't study, they cheat and they still expect the best grades and they lie on top of that. They will lie and swear to God. They will put their hand on a Quran and swear to God while they're lying. I didn't cheat on this test and this nigga cheated. And I've told these women this and what these women do is they start to defend the dysfunctional niggas. That's what they've done. But if I sit up here and I talk bad about a man because he's not Bedouin enough, he's not traditional enough, uh, Meaning, when, when I say that, I mean he doesn't spend his weekends uh, out, on, out in the desert and calling it a vacation. He doesn't cheat and he doesn't lie. If I were to blast, you know, to blast a local man for this, the women would say, oh yeah, that is kind of bad. I mean, it is kind of treacherous. He's not really practicing the culture. That's what these women would say. Now, these are the same women who, when they go abroad, they're the first ones to change their clothes. And I don't just mean to something that's less, uh, uh, less Arabian and Gulf. I mean something that is specifically less Islamic. And they'll do it. So I lost respect for them bitches too. Straight up. You spitting these little rat bastards out your wounds when you get married? No. You know why else I lost respect for them? Some of the men told me that when they do get married, some of them told me that one of the reasons they put marriage off voluntarily is because they want to wait to have children. It's not the marriage that they really hate. It's the idea of having kids right off the bat. And I say, well, why is that? And they say, well, because when you, once you get married, you have kids. I asked them, well, what's wrong with condoms? Oh, no, these women ain't going for that. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. They want a baby as soon as. They want to be pregnant the first month. That's it. You get married, you're supposed to have your baby nine months later because if you don't, she might leave you. And I said, why is that? One husband told me, he said, any woman's mother will tell her, get pregnant as quick as you can and chain him to you. That's what they say. Now, does this sound familiar? They're just doing it inside of marriage. Not so much outside of marriage, but that's what they're doing. Chain this man to you so he can't leave. And men still will leave if these women drive them away. So let me explain it to you like this. I talked about the better one, Cynthia. 
if I were to decide one day that these people do not deserve to be independent and they need to be colonized by somebody much darker, wider nose, bigger lipped, and, and doesn't speak Arabic as well as they do, and I decided to raise a black army to do it, because black Americans alone outnumber this population, black Americans, not to mention other black folks. And so we did do something like this. And we told the women, control your men's rebellion. Really? And let's say the men did not listen. What do you think would happen after we get through wiping out the men? The women only have two choices. You a concubine and you bend over for our young teenagers that are too young to get married to their own women, but they can stick it in you and you can breed us some little half breeds or, or we will wipe you the hell out because you don't resist us. You failed to put down this rebellion and you failed to control it. So you're either a concubine, free and cheap pussy, or you're nothing, and we would wipe them out. That's exactly what these white folks would do to you. If we did what, what you were telling us to do, after they get done wiping black men out, they're gonna come for you next. Because you failed to put down the rebellion and control it before it even got that far. That is what they want you to do, and they will look at you and say you didn't do it. There's something else you forgot, Cynthia G. Other races' men's ability to provide is not even more than ours. You see, if this was true, then sisters would have long ago gotten passports, like brothers are doing, and gone abroad to get men who can provide more than just some exotic penis attached to muscles on a beach somewhere. In other words, sisters would be traveling for husbands, not just for sex. When you go abroad, you learn that many non-white men around the world, even many Eastern European men who are white, are affected negatively by this white supremacy, and they therefore have difficulty providing. But Western black women are more materialistic than other female victims of white supremacy have ever been. And that's why I say Western black women. Western black women wouldn't date white men for so long. They refused to for decades and decades and decades. And now we find that they're increasingly dating and marrying not even other men of color. Why? Because you know they might lose that ability to provide. You certainly aren't doing it for other men of color back in their home countries. You're not going and traveling to them to marry them. Even though they're traditional, they don't make enough money for you. They make less than African-Americans do overall. The standard of living would drop. You're not going to go to Mexico to marry a Mexican man unless he's really wealthy. He has to make more than a black man does. But back in the States, you will marry specifically a white man, the same white man that you associate with weakness. And we know this because light skinned black men after 1989 were associated with weakness by black women. Due to their perception of white blood, but the outright white unmixed geek at this point in, in the game is considered to be OK. Why? Because he can provide. We'll never forget that their extra resources are actually ours. See, we earn these resources right alongside you at gunpoint, and we got robbed of it at the same gunpoint. You're just saying that they're better providers because you would rather side with the mugger, robber, oppressor of the planet and eat more than to be the victim of the robbery, which means you eat less until justice is restored. You might say, well, you're not doing anything to restore justice. Well, if I was doing anything to restore justice, do you think I could afford to tell you about it? I'm sure there's some black men somewhere that are trying their best, but they can't tell you about it. They can't even cooperate with other people because they can't plan anything with somebody else because it's too risky. So if there's no morality in your choice, then there's no immorality in black men not only wanting but expecting everything while providing nothing. Because it's not what you, you're actually doing. I expect the same thing as Miss Ann has, but I'm not going to do anything extra. Look, Miss Ann, while she might be weak as hell and while she's even chasing after brothers, one thing Miss Ann will do if that white man gets in trouble, she's going to hide that white man. But then again, she's probably going to get less of a backlash for it, too. Now, black men didn't fight the Supreme Court to marry and screw white women. We fought to earn the same bread for the same work. Mrs. Loving, that white woman's black wife, she fought to legalize her marriage in either Virginia or North Carolina. That's the one that fought the Supreme Court for it. It wasn't us. No, so we have usually associated, uh, honestly, we've usually associated white women with danger. And the only reason we could even raise our junk to be with them is when they chased us. And even then, it was only younger generations of brothers that hadn't grown up with Jim Crow and lynching. The real reason for most brothers, I'm sorry, the real weakness, actually, your real competition for most brothers really ain't even Becky. It's the Latin American, black or mestizo, and the Asian woman, and, and not the palest of them either. 
They're the ones that really are going to give you stiff competition because, frankly, Becca and Amby, Becky and Amber, they just run after brothers more. That's all. I mean, what they'll do is they'll make it obvious when they like a brother, more obvious even than when they like one of their own men. I mean, when they like a brother, they'll show it. When they like a Brad, they'll hide it. Brad's got to, I mean, hell, Brad, actually, he has to make a hell of a lot more than a brother's got to make to get the same Becky or the same Amber. Because in the club, she sees Brad and she likes him and she sees, uh, you know, she sees Junebug and she likes him. She'll show Junebug and Junebug, unlike for you, Junebug doesn't have to be a thug or a road man. He ain't got to be a, all of that for you to admit that you like him. Well, for her to admit that she likes him, but for you to admit it, oh yeah, I mean, look, look at your own choice, Cynthia. You bought your own plane ticket and flew yourself out across the United States multiple times to raw dog screw a serial baby mama who already had five babies and four baby mamas. You became the sixth baby mama with the fifth baby. What's going on here? You paid your own money. Another thing too, Cynthia, a feminist that I uh, used to work with, she used to work here with me, actually. She's from uh, Miami, Florida. Talked the same feminism. And men are this, that, and the other. But it turns out that she was really just mad because she had dated a Saudi guy years ago back in the United States. He was studying and living in Miami and uh, he had a condo and all that. So he was one of those Saudis with money. So she was dating him for like six years. And then when it was time to get serious and she wanted to meet the family, he finally had to break it to her. Yeah, you know, my parents already picked somebody out for me and they told me about it. So no, we're not, you, it's not going to be you and me. But it's been fun though, thank you. And she was ticked about it because a, a, a rich man got away. That's why she was mad. She was ticked off. When she finally came here to the Arabian Gulf in the same region as where that man was from, she found another rich boyfriend in one of, um, um, in one of the port cities in this peninsula. She was doing the same thing. She started buying her own plane tickets to fly down and go see him on the weekends. Same thing that you did. And what's funny about that is that uh, that y'all talk the same feminist points. And so now I'm sitting up here putting you on blast about it because, well, your own friend already did it. Your own friend put you on blast. But here you are sitting up trying to disparage black men as a whole. But look at the decision you made. You only spent your own money to go and screw a brother that was low life and a serial baby mama. He was, he's not even a Pookie or Ray Ray. He's not shooting a place up. But the point is that he's just, he's a tattooed dude that's pretty much unemployable in most, uh, especially most professional circles, most lucrative fields, he's unemployable. And you flew out to see him. You pretty much paid for that ticket just to go give him the box with no protection because you were looking to get pregnant. And you were looking to get pregnant by a man like him. Because you thought if, you thought, okay, if he acts the same way, he acts stereotypical, then I can pretty much bash him like I've already been doing and use him as an example to bash black men. You were setting it up. Now everybody is sitting up and saying to you, actually, every man is sitting up and saying to you, no, you don't get to bash all of us. You flew out there to see him, to give him the box. You're not doing that for most of us. You're calling most of us beta male coons and everything else. Well, that's what you wind up doing to yourself. But see, the thing is, Cynthia, you're such a joke that any woman that listens to you for other than entertainment, and I mean ridiculing entertainment, is also a fool. But the problem is you still have too large of a female audience, which tells me that, frankly, Western black women ain't shit for listening to you. You've been on black women's fear multiple times. She's supposed to cancel you. What is she doing having you on there? So now I know that she's not much. I know I can't really afford to listen to her either. She's just mad because black men won't be her attack dog. A protector is different from an attack dog. And she wants black men to be her attack dogs. And now she's upset because they won't be. Well, this part, I guess she has to have that mindset because she's stupid enough to listen to you after you've been outed by your own friend for pretty much paying a serial baby daddy to become your baby daddy too. I guess the only penis worth paying for is the one that other women have, are, have shown that they want too. Is that it? But see, when you were, and you admitted that you used to do this, when you were selling your body to white men, um, you were selling it. it. It wasn't free. Then you turn around and you paid to go out and fly a brother. But then you want to tell brothers that we need to be more like white men. Well, what do you mean? You mean we need to go out and rob the rest of the world at gunpoint to get the resources that you want us to have? You mean, you mean that we need to go out and commit the same oppression against other people because you want to live a white woman's lifestyle? 
I mean, if that's what you mean, you need to just go ahead and come out and say it so that you will look as foolish as you are instead of trying to dress it up. And it will know, okay, this is an idiot. And any other idiot just like her, we can pretty much dismiss. I'll be honest with you. If you would come out and said it pretty much just, if you'd just been that open and honest, Raw Dog Perkins probably would not have been willing to do what he did with you, even if you paid. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But your chances of being able to find any black man to father your child would have been very, very slim. But one of the things that you'll have to realize, Cynthia, is that you're going to have to look into your own subconscious. And most women around the world aren't really told to do it. Most men aren't told look into your own subconscious. But the difference is that most Western women are outright excused from this, whereas most men around the world at some point are forced either by circumstance or told outright, you got to look at your own subconscious. Whereas, you, you know, you belong to that geographical designation of women that's never had to do it. So anyway, um, you want to live in that white woman's lifestyle, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, maybe that's why you wear the weave. Maybe that's what that's about. But it's not going to happen. You, you're just not going to get it. It's not your fault. It's not mine. But if anybody out here is really expecting everything and providing nothing, it's your stupid behind. And whoever the hell listens to you. I hope this benefits you in the long run. Sign and blackout. Salam alaikum.